Especially during times of crisis and conflict. The fight could happen tonight, it could happen tomorrow, it could happen in a couple of years, but we need to start innovating now, and that's exactly what we're doing. For Space Systems Command, working faster means breaking from the status quo, exploiting existing space architectures and capabilities in creative new ways, working with commercial industry, innovators and tech startups, and allied nations to exploit, buy, and build, to deliver better, faster, and more affordably. We are advancing the space architecture that we have up there right now, making sure that it's optimal, making sure that we get new space architecture set up, prototyping, experiments, to ensure that we can outpace the enemy tomorrow. To maintain our lead in space, Space Systems we Command has embraced a new culture, empowering its people sure to race forward, sure that we get new space speak up, and up, connect with industry in unprecedented new sure ways. Our people are agile, they continue our partnerships, they are working space. collaboratively space day after day in order to contribute to the culture, big warfighter purpose. Space is a team sport. We have to work together to provide integrated, resilient capability and speeds in order to fight through any contingency crisis. Space Systems Command is moving fast to maintain U.S. superiority in space, running a marathon of sprints, thinking differently, acting boldly, empowering at every level to make space work for us all. At Space Systems Command, Space starts here. Running a marathon of sprints. At T minus four minutes and 45 seconds, all systems are currently a go for an on time liftoff. Next up, the trusty structure next to the vehicle, which is known as the strong back, will begin to retract away from the vehicle, and that is in preparation for liftoff. All systems are and there's that call out for an on time liftoff. Next now, you can see on your screen, just below the fairing, around the second stage are some clamp arms, and they're starting to slowly open up. Once they are fully open, then the TE can begin to recline away from the vehicle. And the vehicle is nearly fully loaded with propellants and will complete at T minus two minutes. And there you can see on your screen, those clamp arms are opening up there. The range is green and ready to support. Weather is 90% go for T0, so... NY lock float is complete. Very great news with the weather. If for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow around the same time. And there you can see on your screen, the clamp arms are now fully open. So that TE to the right of the vehicle that you see there, to the right of the fairing, is beginning to slowly move away from the vehicle. Additionally, TY lock float is complete. Additionally, it is worth noting that at the request of our customer, we will, again, not be showing views of the payload. So we will be ending the webcast just after Falcon Heavy's side boosters make their way back to land on landing zone one and landing zone two around the T plus eight minute mark into flight. Center core, lock float is complete. And we just heard that call out. The spacecraft is on internal power. Just heard that call out that the center core liquid oxygen loading is complete. That concludes all first stage vehicle propellant loading. We are still loading liquid oxygen on the second stage, and that should conclude at the T minus two minute mark, which will also conclude all propellant loading for Falcon Heavy. You can also see these white clouds on your screen. This is normal. This is us just venting out the boiled off liquid oxygen at the liquid. Stage two lock load is complete. And there's that call out that stage two lock load is complete. That concludes propellant loading on Falcon Heavy. Again, those white clouds that you see around the vehicle are normal. That's us venting out the liquid oxygen that has boiled off of the liquid surface out into the ambient air. Once that cold liquid oxygen meets that warm ambient air, it basically condenses just as you would see water condensing around a cold glass of water. 
The next event coming up will be Falcon Heavy in startup. That's at the T minus one minute mark. Ground gas close out. And now that we have finished propellant loading, we are also clearing out the liquid oxygen line on that transporter rector, and that's why you see a little bit more of those white clouds there on your screen. Again, at the T minus one minute mark, Falcon Heavy will be in startup. This is an autonomous vehicle, so the internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown. Falcon Heavy is in startup. Great news, there's that call out that Falcon Heavy is in startup. Now just waiting for the final call from the launch director. This is the mission director, go for launch. And great news with that call out, all systems are go for launch of Falcon Heavy with USSF 52. Two minutes, 30 seconds. plus 50 seconds into Falcon Heavy's flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Falcon Heavy is carrying OTV, OTV-7 out to space. And we are coming up on max Q here in a few seconds. Max Q. And great call out there. We have passed through max Q. That is the point of peak mechanical stress on the vehicle, and we've now passed through that. So we do have a few events coming up here. That will be booster engine cutoff, or BECO, separation of the side boosters, followed by side booster boost back burn startup, and then the center core main engine cutoff, or MECO. Again, those are a few events coming up here. Biko, side booster separation. That'll be the separation from the center core. The center core will continue to carry stage two with the payload until it shuts down its engines with Miko and performs a standard stage separation like you see on a Falcon 9. And there you can see on your screen, on your right-hand screen, some views from the side boosters and a really awesome view of Falcon Heavy on your left-hand screen with all of those engines burning really bright there. Coming up on Miko, Biko in a few seconds here. Booster engine cut off. Side booster separation confirmed. And back to. Booster, boost back startup. And great news. We were able to also see that live on your screen. Biko, the side boosters have separated from the center core, and we have the startup of the boost back burn on both of those side boosters looking really awesome there on your screen. Now the side boosters are returning to Florida under the power of three engines. Coming up are a few events in rapid succession. That will be the conclusion of the side booster's boost back burn, MECO, stage separation of the center core and the second stage, as well as SES-1 
or the NVAC engine igniting on the second stage. SES-1 stands for second stage engine startup. And as I mentioned previously, per the request of our customer, we will not be showing second stage views after SES-1. Additionally, our center core or stage one is expendable today, so we will not be attempting to recover it, but we will be following the side boosters back to land, so you can continue to stay tuned for that. Now we're coming up on the conclusion of the side boosters burn. Booster, boost track, shut down. Stage separation confirmed. And back in mission and full pass. And there we were also able to see and hear the call outs for the side boosters, boost back burns concluding. We had Miko, our main engine cutoff of the center core, as well as stage separation, and also heard confirmation that the NVAC engine has ignited. Now, as we mentioned before- Fairing separation confirmed. And great call out there, also a confirmation that the fairing has separated from the second stage. Again, we will be attempting to recover those fairing halves when they fall back to earth using our recovery vessel, Doug. Trajectory is nominal. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, the center core was not built to land or be reused. It is expendable, having given its all for the mission. We will say a big thank you to the center core. For the two side boosters, the boost back burns have completed. And so far, the vehicles are on a good trajectory, coming back to land. And again, with successful second engine start one, that will wrap up our coverage pertaining to the stage, to, to the second stage. So we'll focus our attention on the side boosters. Now those side boosters are currently on their way back to land. In order to land back on land, we typically have three burns. Center core FTS has saved. We typically have three burns. They've already concluded a boost back burn, which helps them turn back around and head back towards land. The next burn coming up is the entry burn. That's where we'll reignite three of the engines on each of those boosters, and that helps slow them down as they enter back into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, if we do have successful landings today, we'll mark the 257th and 258th landing of an orbital class rocket. And those entry burns are coming up here in about 30 seconds or so. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the center core will be expended and we are not attempting to recover it today. Again, the entry burn is coming up here for the side boosters. Booster entry burn startup. And there's that call out that the entry burns have begun on the side boosters. And there you can see on your screen. Stage two, FTS is saved. You can see on your screen, the engines have reignited. Booster entry burn shut down. PY FTS has saved. And a short NY, burn. NY FTS has saved. Short burn for both of those boosters, just under 20 seconds. All vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Great call outs there, all vehicles on nominal trajectories. Now again, we do have one more burn for each of these side boosters coming up in just about 30 seconds. That is the landing burn. It's a single engine burn for each booster. And just one engine is powerful enough to slow the vehicles down and safely land back on land. Again, we are targeting, Transonic. targeting landing zone one and landing zone two for today's landings. Booster landing burn. And we heard that call out, and you can see on your screen that the engines have reignited. Landing leg deploy. Let's watch as the side boosters touch down for landing. Stage two is in terminal guidance.
And there you can see on your screen and hear the crowd here, very excited. We have successfully landed both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zone one and landing zone two. With these two side boosters, this marks the 257th and 258th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. And with successful confirmation of our side boosters landing, that will bring our webcast to a close today. We'd like to thank the United States Space Force for entrusting us with today's mission. And we'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in. As a reminder, in about three hours from now, our 96th and final mission of 2023 is set to lift off from our neighboring pad here in Florida. Be sure to tune in for that one. We hope you all enjoy a happy and healthy new year. And we'll see you back here for an exciting 2024.